Hey friend, today we're going to relax. We're going to chill. We're just going to take a look at some images I recently made with the Tamron 70 to 180 lens, which you guys know I purchased, along with a secret camera body. Came out in 2019. I've been wanting to use this camera body for a couple of years now, and I finally got borrow lenses. They sent it to me, and it's a secret though. So I'll tell you about it when I get back. Wait a minute. Come to think of it, you probably saw the title to the video, and you know it's a Sony a7R 4 so it's not really a secret. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you for joining me. I am Craig Lash. I teach sports photography, and I'm here to help you make better sports images. So make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my other videos. Now, if you've been here before, thank you for joining me once again. You know, I do appreciate all of you guys and make sure you leave some comments for me. I do reply to all the comments. Now, let's take a look at some images. I'm going to start with the volleyball images and there's three things I want you to know. I had continuous autofocus is what I was using as well as flexible spot. And I also had eye and face tracking turned on as well. On the left hand side of the image is the file information. So you guys know what the shutter speed was, what the f-stop was, the focal length, as well as the ISO. Now, the interesting thing about when you're shooting volleyball, sometimes the ball ends up someplace you don't anticipate. So in this first image, which there's three sets of photos here, the before and after. So you got my first shot straight out of the camera, as well as what I edited it to be cropping and doing some minor adjustments. But the cool thing about volleyball is sometimes you don't know where the ball is gonna end up. So in this image right here, the player was a couple steps closer to me when the ball came over the net and then she had to move to go get to it. So she's farther away than I anticipated. So I should have been zoomed in a little bit more, but that's okay because we're working with 61 megapixels. So when I crop in, I'm not losing anything in the quality. Second image, the thing I really don't like about this image is the basket up here, but we all know shooting high school gyms, you really can't do much about some of the things that are in the gym that are out of your control. So when I crop in, make some minor adjustments, you can see it's actually not too bad of an image. Got some good color going on. Actually like the skin tones, got a good focus. Even if you zoom in, it still looks really nice and sharp. Final image for volleyball. I could crop this in a little bit and we'll see if I did in a second. Again, the first images you see in these sets are all straight out of the camera and I only shot JPEG because, well, I was lazy and that's all I wanted to shoot was JPEG. So let's take a look at the edited photo. I just did some quick edits to it. I didn't crop in. I could crop in, but truthfully, every crop I tried, I really didn't care for. So I just kind of left it at this for now. For those of you who shoot volleyball, you know it can be kind of taxing on your nerves trying to anticipate where the ball is going to be. But one of the keys to shooting volleyball is eyes. Keep both eyes open. Don't close them. A lot of people, you know, they'll put the camera up and they'll close an eye and you don't want to do that. Keep both eyes open so you can see the court better and you can adjust where you need to go. The toughest part in is zooming in and zooming out, but that's just going to be experience after you've done enough times. If you see the player moving away, you can often compensate and take care of the shot real easily. Next up, some football images. And now you get a chance to see how the 70 to 180 millimeter lens, which is short by most standards and most professional photographers will say, well, you can't shoot with anything shorter than a 200 millimeter. I'm about to prove that wrong right now. Let's take a look at them. For the football images, of course, continuous autofocus, left that on. I did turn off the eye and face tracking. They're wearing helmets. No reason to have eye and face tracking on when they're wearing helmets, right? And I changed the flexible spot tracking to expand flexible spot tracking, which worked really well. I really like that feature. Okay, so here's the information again. We got the shutter speed, the f-stop, and then this one at 180 millimeters, I'm zoomed in as far as I can zoom. I can't get any closer. I'm on the sidelines. Unless I get on the field, I can't get any closer to the quarterback here. So let's see what happens when I crop with 61 megapixels using the 70 to 180 lens. And there you go. Again, 180 millimeters. I'm gonna crop in and look at that. It's like I'm right there in his face. Next image, the sun is going down. You can see I've got some light on the field. I got some shadows on the field. I've got the ISO now at 400. If you go to the previous one, it was 200 because he's dead on in the light. So this one I had to make some adjustments for the lighting. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, 180 millimeters, zoomed in all the way. I crop in and there you go. There's a nice shot. Again, tack sharp. Got some good action going on just before he hits the ball. Just the anticipation of kicking the ball. A lot of photographers like the foot on the ball, which I had the image as well, but, but I really like this type of photo because I can feel the tension that he's just about to kick the ball and that anticipation of where's the ball gonna go. 
Is he going to kick it way downfield? Is he going to top it just a little bit so it only goes like 10 to 20 yards? I, I like that anticipation. Next image, right in front of me, 105 millimeters. I wasn't able to back out far enough to get to the 70. That's okay. All I have to do with this image is zoom in to take you into the action even more to make you part of the action. You can even see, look, he's got an owie. Ouch, that must have hurt. Got some good facial expressions as well. And you can also, it's just tack sharp once again. What a great combination. The Tamron 70 to 180 paired with the Sony A7R4, 61 megapixels. I keep saying that because that's just incredible. And what you can do with it, the cropping, you don't have to worry about losing much quality at all. And if you have the opportunity, try this combination or if nothing else, get the A7R4 and give it a shot. It's an incredible camera to work with. It felt so good in my hands. And I liked how responsive the autofocusing system was. When I used the autofocusing eye and face tracking, it was spot on. Now, the one problem I had with it was sometimes I had two players close together and I'd be focused on the one and it would move over to the other person because they were a little bit closer and it saw the eye. It's the only time I had any problems. Other than that, nothing but good to say about this combination. The only problem with this setup is the A7R4 is pretty expensive, $3,500. So me trying to find you guys a budget-friendly setup for entry-level sports photography, this isn't going to be it. But if you have some extra cash, you could probably pick one up used for about $2,500 is what I think I've recently saw it for. That'd be a great camera to have and you can use it for so many things. But for you guys to continue your sports photo education, check out these couple of videos here on the side. I think you will enjoy them. And as always, everybody, stay safe and stay with me. Get out and shoot.